I always consider it to be a privilege when I can review a particular vehicle in a game having had a real life experience with said vehicle, or at least something that's close enough to be comparable. For instance, when I review the BMW i8 in Forza compared to real life, if I review the Touareg in Test Drive Unlimited compared to my Touareg, and this occasion is a little bit more tangential but still shares a lot in common with my car, because my car, the Quattroporte, uses a lot of similar components, sometimes the same components as this vehicle, the Maserati Grand Sport. Now, the Grand Sport is a car which which, unlike the Quattroporte, seems to have unfortunately been a little bit forgotten on the market these days. And although I don't mean that in the complete sense, it certainly still has plenty of fans, myself included, the Gran Turismo is so much more in your face in terms of having stunning styling and great performance, and also, of course, it's a, a much more revamped vehicle in comparison, and yet the Quattroporte, even up until now, feels kind of similar to the early 2000s shape. It's not as radical a departure as the Gran Turismo is compared to the Gran Sport. Now, this car shares the same Ferrari-sourced V8 engine as my Quattroporte, a 4.2-litre naturally aspirated V8 with about 400 horses and roughly 330 pound-feet of torque. It also uses the same transmission, a somewhat temperamental Cambia Corsa flappy paddle with automatic option. Just like my Quattroporte, the later cars used ZFs, but of course stuff like reliability and ease of use doesn't matter too much. In a racing game, you just get in and drive fast. One of the big advantages of a car like this though, over for instance mine, is the proportions. Because not only is the car shorter and, at least as far as I can tell, a little bit narrower than the Quattroporte as well, so it's physically smaller, which of course makes it more nimble, but crucially, it's about 300 kilos lighter, which is not surprising at all. The Quattroporte of my generation is just under two tons. It's close enough to two tons. It's like 1980 kilos or something like that. This, on the other hand, is 1670, so it's still no flyweight. It is a pretty heavy little 400 horsepower car, but at the same time, those 300 kilos make a massive difference, even with the same essential engine and gearbox setup. Of course, it's still rear wheel drive. The 0 to 60 time drops from about five and a half seconds on my car to just under five in this 4.9, and the top speed also increases from 170 miles an hour in my car to 180 in this one. So no real surprises there. It's still, of course, a relatively modest sports car by today's standards. There are plenty of quicker ones now, even hot hatches that are quicker than that. But that doesn't mean that this car doesn't still have merit and value and can't be used to great effect. But that's the thing. The Grand Sport is a car which always felt a little bit long in the tooth. It felt like it had potential that it never quite reached, because of course the Grand Sport was not the first iteration of this idea. It started in the 90s, in fact, with the 3200 GT, which is slightly different in terms of styling. It has the same underlying shape, a much smaller engine. It's actually a turbo-aspirated car originally, and it had a lot of raw potential, but some would argue it never fully delivered on it. This car, on the other hand, is much more universally loved. Of course, it has drawbacks, just like mine does, but it is a car that many people believe actually realized the potential of the 3200 platform, which is great to see. And ultimately, I'm sure that Maserati learned a lot of things from this car that they then transferred and improved on with the Gran Turismo. But the interesting thing that I find with the Grand Sport is that even in a Forza game where you don't have the option of a Gran Turismo, like the older ones, people still didn't seem to use this car that much. And I find that a shame, because the Maserati selection in the Forza games is actually pretty strong. You've got classics, a sedan, a couple of coupes, a supercar in the form of the MC12, and even a couple of racing versions of said MC12, be it the Corsa or even the Falon GT1 car. So they've got a strong showing that you can use in multiple categories, and even this car is relatively modest, partially due to how heavy it is. It's only a B category vehicle, which is kind of shocking when you think of the fact that it is a 180 mile an hour Maserati. The category is only 400 and 77 PI points. So you've got a ton of range that you can do to this thing, and it's one of those occasions where, somewhat ironically, in a similar way to a muscle car, I would actually recommend focusing more on dropping the weight and improving the tires and the brakes, more than increasing the power, for instance. You could go down that route, 
but it doesn't really need more power. A car like this already has a lot of finesse, so dropping the weight even more can make it a track weapon. Then when you factor in on top of that that the price tag in this game is only 50,000 credits, which is borderline like Corvette territory rather than a, a typical Italian exotic, partially because it is a little bit longer in the tooth and through the Forza games, cars like this do typically get cheaper, it's actually something of a bargain. Getting this car for 50 grand in the B category gives you so much to work with. You don't necessarily even need to be a full-on Maserati aficionado, the car still has a lot to offer, because unlike a Ferrari, Maseratis, speaking both from game experience and personal experience, are actually very forgiving cars. They're very easy to drive, the handling is sublime, the steering is fantastic, and even though they might not necessarily be as comfortable as something equivalently from Germany, for example, they're not really trying to be. They are more exotic than that. What they do deliver, however, is stunning looks, a great sound, surprisingly good handling for something which isn't actually that lightweight. They are certainly the more oddball and less obvious choice over something like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, that's one of the reasons why I love them, and to me they have this interesting balance between being oddball and different, but not just different for the sake of it, they actually do deliver on being different. Almost like Panos does in America. They are oddball, they are rarer, they are more obscure, but they're also great at what they do. They are highly competitive motorsport, track day, and even road machines, and to me Maserati has that as well. This car is easily an undervalued gem in pretty much any racing game that features it. There are a couple of variations of this car in Test Drive Unlimited as well, and I very rarely would see people using it online, and I think it's a shame, because although I'm not claiming that it's the best thing out there just because I love Maserati, of course not, what I am saying is a car like this is definitely worth looking into. It's this interesting little time capsule of an early 2000s car that really took a 90s concept to the pinnacle of how good it could be. And from a racing point of view, well, there's certainly plenty to love about that in the world of Forza. But overall, that's it for this review. Definitely check out the Grand Sport if you have the chance. It's easily one of the most overlooked Maseratis in the series. And until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always. Thanks for watching.